And our fantasy round 21, the first round in a long time where we didn't have origin impacting it, a lot of buys or major injuries heading into the round. I will say we did have a few injuries during the round, but there were some massive scores. It did not disappoint. Let's get into the top scorers for round 21. First up here, return of the king, Nathan Cleary. He popped off last week. He took that as a challenge and he popped off even more this week. So look at his scoring profile. He kicked off with some massive plays at the start of this game. Had a couple of tries very early in this game. Had a try assist as well. He was at about 70 points at halftime. So it was never not going to be a massive game for Nathan Cleary here. So three tries, two try assists, 242 meters run is absolutely bonkers. Look, the guy has no issues at all with any sort of hamstring, any injuries at all. He came to this game. He dominated. I'll tell you what. I reckon he was listening to some of that news. that was talking about, hey, Mitch Moses has overtaken him on the representative stage. Mitch Moses did win that series for the Blues, but Nathan Cleary in Clubland, he's getting it done. So Nathan Cleary, 112 points. Next up, Connor Tracy, 88 points for him. And this was a real shocker for the Broncos. So Brisbane just could not defend anyone. Some very big scores from the outside backs of the Dogs. And Connor Tracy was the top of that group. So for him, three tries, three try assists, and seven tackle breaks. Now, that three tries and three try assists, that's very hard to do. <laughs> that's very hard to do especially against a team who was in the grand final last year and had it all to play for this week and just didn't really turn up in this game. The dogs absolutely dominated. Look, 88 points for him, 500K. I'm still not targeting Connor Tracy at all as a buy, but I will say he's got that ability and he absolutely crushed it in this game. Hopefully the dogs can make a deep run. Hudson Young is up next here, so 83 points for him. And he was at number one on this list last week. So for him, two top three finishes in a row. We talked about him last week being a very reliable scorer, not needing those big attacking stats to go pretty well, but those attacking stats usually boost him up. Well, this week, it's 36 tackles, 11 tackle busts, and 207 meters run. He didn't have a try in this game. He had a line break and a try assist, so he had some attacking plays. He also had three offloads, but he didn't have those big try scoring plays and still scored 83 points. So for Hudson Young, I look at this game and I think about the fact that he had eight missed tackles as well, which is minus 16 points. So this score could have been even higher. Like if you just add those on, for example, the score jumps to 99 points, which it's pretty crazy. It could be a pod for the run home that you do look at. Next up here, we've got Fodawaker, 80 points. And Fodawaker has been a bit of a mixed bag, but he's hit some form lately. So this, again, was a real base stat heavy performance. 37 tackles, 8 tackle busts, nearly 200 meters run, 560K for Fodawaker. Would I be targeting him? Probably not. Jamin Jolliffe is back very soon. He tends to eat up a lot of the minutes in the middle. But I will say Fodder Waker in this game, this was a premium performance and the type of game that is what gets him into origin. I do think in real footy terms, he does need Tino back. Tino is that leader prop and Fodder Waker is an excellent second prop to him. Uh, whereas I think the Titans are lacking in that leadership in the middle at the moment. Going through DC up next, and this was a really strong performance from him. We talked about him last week as an option where if you get on him, he's a up high upside, but a bit of risk in him. And 78 points here, top five score. He showed the upside. So 620 kick meters, dominated the kicking, had 179 meters run. Again, if your half is running for 100 plus meters, you're usually going to have a pretty good day in the scoring. And he had one try in this game as well. Look, 725K, 78 points. His price is going to rise a little bit here. Not a lot, but a little bit. I still would target guys like Fogarty, guys like Nathan Cleary, even someone like Trendle or Dylan Brown if you want someone cheaper. I'm just not super into the DCE gamble, but at the same time, he does have those weeks and those months where he does average 80, 90, 100 points. So if you want to roll dice on this, he absolutely has the potential to pop off. Just keep in mind that Manly do have the buy next week. Going through here, it's notable mentions here. So uh, we got Fogarty first, 76 points, crushed it. He was one that we were talking about as a big buy. Kalamatangi with 74 points. Murray back very soon, so I think that might slow down a little bit. We got Karaz in with 72, scored a try, dominated the Broncos. Payne Haas scored a 70 as well. So with him... Again, he's just coming out. He's doing pain ass things. So no big attacking plays. Quite a few tackle breaks, quite a few offloads in this game. But mostly it was just base stats for him. And then we got Isaiah Yo with uh, that's actually just updated to 70 points as well. So <laughs> these scores are still updating as we do this. But Isaiah Yo, pain Haas, they are 1A, 1B when it comes to the middle forwards. And they've absolutely dominated this week. Anyway, that is our fantasy top scorers for round 21. Hopefully you had a few of these guys in your team. Hopefully you didn't have guys like Ruben Garrick and Cotter who did cop those issues that would have put a <laughs> hit on your score. But if you did score over a thousand, you had a great week. And if you scored 900 plus, you're still in the running there as well. I'll see you next week.